Myasis. The word itself sounds like something out of a horror film, and in a way it is. You see, myasis is the infestation of living tissue by fly larvae. These larvae, better known as maggots, feed on the host's dead or living tissue. While several types of myasis exist, today, we're focusing on a particularly unpleasant variety intestinal myasis. Imagine this. You're going about your day, completely unaware that tiny creatures are wreaking havoc inside your gut. That's the insidious nature of intestinal myasis. It occurs when fly larvae inhabit the intestines, feasting on your body's nutrients and causing a range of uncomfortable, sometimes even dangerous symptoms. Now you might think, surely this only happens in far-flung corners of the world. Sadly, that's not entirely true. While more common in tropical and subtropical regions with poor sanitation, intestinal myiasis can occur anywhere. The good news, intestinal myiasis is relatively rare. The even better news, with a bit of knowledge and some preventative measures, you can significantly reduce your risk. So let's delve deeper into the world of these tiny terrors, shall we? Not all flies are created equal. Some, like the common housefly, are merely annoying. Others, however, can pose a serious threat to our health. When it comes to intestinal myasis, several fly families deserve our attention. First up, we have the flesh flies, belonging to the family Sarcophagidae. These flies, as their name suggests, have a penchant for decaying flesh. However, they can also lay their eggs in food, which, if ingested, can lead to intestinal myasis. Next, we have the blowflies, members of the Califoridae family. These flies are attracted to wounds and sores, but they can also lay their eggs in contaminated food. If ingested, their larvae can make their way to the intestines, causing myiasis. Finally, we have the cheese flies, belonging to the family Pyophilidae. These flies are notorious for laying their eggs in cheese and cured meats. Consuming infested food can introduce the larvae into the digestive system, leading to intestinal myiasis. It's important to remember that these are just a few examples. Various other fly species can cause intestinal myiasis, highlighting the importance of proper food hygiene and sanitation. So how do these tiny terrors actually get inside us? The answer, more often than not, lies in what we eat and drink. Fly larvae, you see, are masters of disguise. They can lurk in seemingly harmless places, just waiting for the opportunity to invade our bodies. One common route of entry is through contaminated food. Flies are attracted to all sorts of things we humans find delicious, ripe fruits, fresh vegetables, even cooked meat. If these foods are left uncovered or improperly stored, flies can lay their eggs on them. We, unsuspecting victims, then consume these tainted treats, unknowingly swallowing the fly eggs along with them. But food isn't the only culprit. Water, too, can serve as a vehicle for these tiny invaders. Flies often lay their eggs in stagnant water sources, like uncovered water tanks or puddles. Drinking this contaminated water can introduce the larvae into our system, setting the stage for intestinal myiasis. Once inside our digestive tract, the real trouble begins. The warmth and moisture of our intestines provide the perfect environment for the eggs to hatch. The larvae, now free to roam, begin feeding on the partially digested food in our gut. In some cases, they might even burrow into the intestinal wall itself, causing further damage and discomfort. Section 4. Telltale Signs. Recognizing the Symptoms. Imagine this. You've unknowingly ingested fly eggs and now those eggs have hatched inside your gut. What happens next? Well, your body isn't about to take this invasion lying down. It's going to fight back and you're going to feel it. The symptoms of intestinal myasis can vary depending on the type of fly larvae involved and the severity of the infestation. However, there are some common signs to watch out for. One of the most frequent complaints is abdominal pain. This pain can range from a dull ache to sharp cramps, often mimicking the symptoms of other gastrointestinal issues. Another common symptom is diarrhea. The larvae, you see, release toxins as they feed and grow. These toxins irritate the lining of the intestines, leading to frequent watery bowel movements. In some cases, the diarrhea may even contain blood or mucus, a sure sign that something is amiss. But the digestive woes don't end there. Nausea and vomiting are also common symptoms of intestinal myasis. The body, in its attempt to expel the invaders, may trigger these reflexes, leaving you feeling queasy and drained. Section 5. Unmasking the Invader. Diagnosing Intestinal Myasis. 
Diagnosing intestinal myiasis can be tricky. The symptoms, as we've discussed, often mimic other more common gastrointestinal disorders. This means doctors need to be extra vigilant, looking for telltale clues that point to these tiny invaders. One of the first steps in diagnosis is a thorough medical history. Doctors will ask about your recent travels, dietary habits, and any potential exposure to contaminated food or water. This information can provide valuable clues about the likelihood of intestinal myosis. Next comes the physical examination. Doctors will check for signs of abdominal tenderness, fever, and dehydration, all of which can accompany intestinal myosis. They may also order blood tests to look for signs of infection or inflammation. But the most definitive way to diagnose intestinal myosis is by identifying the larvae themselves. This usually involves examining a stool sample under a microscope. Finding fly larvae in the stool confirms the diagnosis and allows doctors to determine the specific type of fly involved. In some cases, imaging tests like x-rays or ultrasounds may be used to assess the extent of the infestation and rule out other potential causes of the symptoms. Section 6. Fighting Back Treatment and Prevention You've been diagnosed with intestinal myosis. Now what? The good news is that treatment is usually straightforward and highly effective. The bad news? It involves confronting those creepy crawlies head-on. The primary goal of treatment is to eliminate the larvae from your system. This is typically achieved with a course of anti-parasitic medication. These medications work by either killing the larvae outright or paralyzing them, allowing your body to flush them out naturally. In addition to anti-parasitic drugs, your doctor may recommend medications to alleviate the symptoms. Anti-diarrheal drugs can help control frequent bowel movements, while anti-nausea medications can provide relief from vomiting. In severe cases, intravenous fluids may be necessary to combat dehydration, but treatment is only half the battle. Preventing intestinal myosis in the first place is crucial, and the key to prevention lies in maintaining good hygiene and being mindful of what you consume. Always wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water before handling food especially after using the toilet or being outdoors. Wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly under running water before consuming them. Cook meat thoroughly to kill any potential larvae. And always store food in airtight containers to prevent flies from laying their eggs. When it comes to water, avoid drinking from questionable sources, especially stagnant water. If you're traveling to areas with poor sanitation, stick to bottled water and avoid ice in your drinks. Remember, prevention is always better than cure. By following these simple steps, you can significantly reduce your risk of encountering these tiny terrors and keep your gut a larva-free zone.